Hello, my name is Jess McKinney. I'm a poet from Inishong, Donegal, and today I'm going to be sharing a few poems from my debut pamphlet, Weeding. Um, the first poem that I want to share with you today was written um, after Joan Didion's infamous collection, Slouching Towards Bethlehem. Um, so here is Slouching. Writers are always selling somebody out or the words I'm reading with one eye on the page and the other on the bowl of granola on my lap, which keeps disappearing into my body somehow. The best bits of the strawberries you picked from somewhere else where life is more sincere, before driving the whole way home to leave them out of the fridge. There are days I don't write anything at all. I say it quietly, like a secret kept from even me. The times I feel the most myself are when I am alone and cycling fast on the footpath at night. I know that I will be going to the cinema again soon, where I will sit in the dark and feel eternal. But for now, the heavy clementine trees are still sunken, and I'm certain nothing will grow from the grove this season. Thank you so much. Um, the poem was written during the first uh, lockdown. I feel like it very much kind of encapsulates that air. Um, the second one I wanted to share with you today is a little bit different. Um, it was written after another great writer that I admire, Amarin de Curin. Whenever I was rereading her collection, Bloodroot, there was this line that kept coming back to me. At first, I knew nothing of the border, only that I was being divided. And uh, it recurred kind of in the waking hours and in my dreams and in the series of dreams that I had during that time, this poem kind of came out. So here is um, Jetsam. We were taking on water when I woke, sinking into the still lake, made strange for all its sea water without a source. The anchor was already over, so I kept searching for something else to lose, some divine logic to pull it all together. Next went the compass, then the sails, crates and barrels, foghorn and paddles, the rudder, tackle and bait, lobster pots, driftwood, wattle and swab, sheep shank, cleat hitch and carrick bend, the cutting wind, choking roots and bags of sand, your cormorant grace, sea legs, divining rods, lost language, wet symbols, stars fished out of the sky, the hard shoulder, perfect shade of the storm, proof of address, confirmation names, dried up words funneled into bottles, what was hidden, sewn into coats, decades of the rosary, knots of dabberlock, the lion in the road, the times we touched, armfuls of yellow gorse reflecting your face lowered into the dark. The residue, the constant moon, fluent wings of deserting creatures I envied, memories certain and not so, each drop in the water, a small cherished christening, the stones from my pockets, even the hags with their perfect holes, each one a turning point, even the one with your name on it. Finally, my own hands, what I was left with and what I was trying to get at. Uh, the third and final poem that I wanted to share with you today is the second last poem from the pamphlet and um, was written after a very wonderful and fun workshop with Liz Berry, um, in which she gave us a writing prompt, and this was sort of what, what came of it. Here is the assignment. The assignment was to write about joy for once, and from where I'm watching you appear to pluck it from thin air, a starry box of love resting gently in your tender palm, and I know I know how it sounds and I know we're playing pretend, but when you tell me to close my eyes, I feel like I have no choice. When you employ me, I make believe. You say, it is not as simple as guessing what is inside. The difficulty comes from describing something without holding it. First, give it a color, green maybe, a gentle mist of closeness. Then picture it as a body of water, a quiet lake, Rain heavy in the pines, encircling our clumsy campfire where the sun is about to go down and I am reflected in your eyes. Then call it a creature, crashing small and fearless. A goldfinch, quaking sprightly and full of impossible energy. I tail it quiet as I can manage and keep reaching until the next thought dispels it, quick as it was conjured. 
When you ask me whether it can be found underground, I am forced to picture the roots I know growing upside down, breaking cool earth, about to flower into something of the present tense. After all this talk of joy, I am not looking forward to telling you that I forgot about the assignment, that I have not been making a list each night of all the things that make me feel grateful. I got as far as the small sharp birds and then stopped. Thank you so much.